Good morning, Jim Morgan. You're on the air. Good morning, Patty Daly. How are you? Fine this morning. How about you? Oh, I'm very upset this morning. I really am. I don't get upset really to call open line when I'm upset, but uh, when I listen to what's going on in our province today, is enough to get people upset. Uh, the people are, are, are for some time now has been losing confidence in the supply of electricity or power supply to to us as Newfoundlanders and Labradorians, Newfoundlanders in particular on the island. But to see what's happening now, I mean, here's a corporation that's controlled by Nalcor. Nalcor is the reason for all this. Now, you might say, oh, Jim Morgan has been opposed to Muskrat Falls and always critical of Nalcor, but let's look at it from the factual point of view. Here we are today. Beta Spare Generator is not operating, leaving 75 megawatts not available to us on the island. Yep. The Hollywood plant, the Unit 1, needs repairs. Uh, still in use, but only supplying 140 megawatts and not the 175 they can normally do. Right. Uh, the hard, the hardwoods plant, the gas turbine needs a fuel valve. Needs a fuel valve for some time, for about three weeks now or longer. And, on, and can only supply 25 megawatts as a result of that. So, so we're losing that megawatts of power. Approximately 160 megawatts of power we're losing right now. And we have a, a, a corporation vice president uh, of, of Nalcor coming on saying, please conserve, or please conserve, help us get through the winter because we may have the temperatures go low. I agree the temperatures are low, yes. But not the first time in our history we've had low temperatures. Uh, well, the wind causes the low chill factor, quite low. But we're having all kinds of problems, and here's why. Nalcor took over hydro. The Hydro Corporation, oh, well, I was in government, that's quite a while, almost 20 years as a minister, and, and longer than as a, me as a member, and we never had a problem with Hydro. Hydro Corporation got a capacity, by the way, to produce 1,700 megawatts of power, 1,700. And here's people from Nalcor on the radio and everywhere else talking about the fact, well, uh, we can't go up above 1,575. In megawatts of power. So where's the confidence? Where, where inside of what you just said there is a reason for people to lose confidence or further lose more confidence in Newfoundland Labrador Hydro? Well, Professor, what happened not too long ago, a few months ago, yeah. back in January, when the whole mess was then caused by, and obviously proven it by a number of people who got digging into it, including myself, that was all because of the lack of proper maintenance done last fall. It wasn't done by 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 the uh, corporation Hydro because Nalcor didn't give them approval to do it. They had applications into the public utilities board at the time, and I know what I'm saying is accurate and true. And they were withdrawn, withdrawn by who withdrew the applications? Well, it wasn't Hydro. Oh no, it's the big boys in Nalcor. People with no experience in, in developing power supplies, none whatsoever, no expertise other than people who can gobbledygook on the public eye airwaves. And, and, uh, is that really, is that actually a fair comment though, Jim, that Nalcor yes, has no idea what they're doing? They're the parent company of, of Newfoundland Labrador Hydro. I mean, it's you know, one and the same. I, uh, listen, Patty, please. Hydro, I just said, is a competent company and always was. But when you have someone like Nalcor confirmed by two members of the board, and I heard one just a few days ago, a lady by the name of Miss Bennett, she said it and carried in a telegram. I saw it and read it myself a few days ago. She said the, the problem with the Nalco, she was on the board for four years, and oh, 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 never mind getting involved in the lady's work there, but she confirmed publicly that she put pressure on government over and over and over to find some expertise in this field on the board. She said there was nobody on the board with any expertise in what they were doing. Now, that's one comment confirming what I'm saying. There was no, there's no expertise with them. But they've been bungling because they've made big mistakes last fall. And here we go again now, having an Alcor vice president, all due respect to the lady. She's a quite capable lady, it sounds like it. And asking people to conserve, conserve, because the temperature may go down again tonight, and we may go up to the peak of 1575. Yeah. Where's the peak? It was always 1,700 megawatts, the capacity of hydro. That's what I'm looking at other supplies, like for the Deer Lake and others. Yeah, that's right. Just you, know, you, know, you know all this anyway. I do. Just a couple of quick questions. Um, 
Now, with Kathy Bennett's comments, of course, who were made public before she was a Liberal candidate, which I think is uh, is worthwhile saying. I actually admire Kathy Bennett a great deal, but that's a fact. Well, if I you leave the board, yeah, of, if you leave the board of a Crown Corporation with those types of concerns, you don't make them public until you're a candidate for the other party. Then there's that's a reasonable comment, and I'm sure she understands that. Plus, at the board level, do you think the board of Nalcor? makes any of the decisions based on uh, applications at the PUB? I don't think they do. I don't think they have any well, say in the matter they, whatsoever. But, but they should be there to give uh, at least good advice uh, why they're sitting there at all on the board. They're not giving some good opinions to the board with regards to their decisions they make. And the decisions they made last year were where they put applications into the PUB to put, replace, uh, buy a new generator in particular, a uh, Ferrari route. That one alone is enough to get me upset. And then few, a few days... Within two days of the sanctioning of Muskrat Falls, that application to buy a new generator for Holyrood was taken back. Taken back by Nalcor. I would say use Nalcor, but of course it was really Hydro who was doing it. Uh, but they, the instructions to remove it came from Nalcor. Now, whether it came from government, I don't know. i got no way of finding out that, as everything is so secret. But it came from, uh, it was withdrawn. And we end up after we've got all kinds of problems up in Holy Road. I mean, if the new generator was done properly as requested last year, but no, no, Nalcor was too busy pumping money into the Muskrat Falls. So far, we've got three billion gone in there. Lots of money for that, but they can't find enough money, to, which uh, they haven't been asking for really. So can't blame them. But uh, but uh, the, you can blame them, not not the PUB. And and the investment is clearly up. Busy pumping money into Muskrat Falls, Patty. Seriously, they're not looking out to our needs for what we have now. But there's by and, and listen, just for the purpose of conversation, there has been a significant increase investment in the system itself by Hydro and Power. Right, we know that to be true, and that's documented and verified by the PUB. On top of all that, what the things that you put forward that you present as facts. Will we ever be able to determine whether or not those facts are actually and legitimately an opinion, a reading of the tea leaves as opposed to something that we can indeed put our finger on a piece of paper and say, here's exactly why I can offer as a fact that with being preoccupied with Muskrat Falls, we didn't do X, Y, and Z, or will that be an opinion? And I'm asking that as a legitimate question. Well, it's my opinion, no question. I think the opinion of many more when the facts came out, but they did their own into inter inside uh, investigation, a big deal about that, there's one ongoing now through the, through the Public Utilities Board, but they did their own, made a public law, we're doing an investigation, not a peep, not a word, not one iota of a comment made public about what that report said. But anyway, they did the report, but they didn't resolve the problems, because we've got problems now, and I'm saying it's time for Newfoundlanders to realize that the government is here to manage things for our affairs. We can't, we can't let Nalcor do the things they're doing. They're doing, they're acting like a government. Nalcor has been acting like a government for the last n a year and a half, two years. I'd also like to ask this question because this is an interesting part of, uh, the whole fiasco that happened last week regarding Derek Daly, the Minister of Natural Resources, whether or not he read the Independent Engineers, en engineers Review. If we have the cost of a crown corporation, that is Nalcor. And given the factor in the energy business, their return to the province is, I mean, people can do their own math and draw their own opinions. But if we have a crown corporation in energy, do we think that they're the right people to read the reviews, make decisions based on engineering and elsewhere, including in the reliability of the system, or should these be political decisions made in cabinet rooms? For me, I think every time we involve a politician, especially a year short of a general election, in those types of decisions, or hoping that they have the credentials, experience, and education required to make an engineering decision, I think is foolhardy. I think if we're going to have the cost of a, an energy company, we should trust them in the energy business. Trust is not a word based on blind faith, but we, they should be the ones doing the work, not the ones in the Federation building, what do you think? No, I think the, the corporation, if they were doing things properly, I mean, the, like I mentioned earlier, the Hydro Corporation itself was doing a damn good job for years. I'm not that old, I'm not too old to express my opinion, but, yeah. you know, they, they were doing a good job. They didn't have this nonsense coming out. Well, what, wait, we'll wait and see now. If we can, if we reach the 1575, uh, we'll have to put the maybe blackouts, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But the fact is they have a capacity of 1700 megawatts of power. And, and that was always there and it should be there now. But why isn't it there now? Because Nalcor 
stepped in on top of hydro and they took control and they've been bungling things ever since and I got no hesitation in saying their incompetent bungling is unbelievable what's going on so where is the government the government is, so, is nowhere to be seen that they're, they're all go hiding behind the conditions of the of the corporation set up by the Newfoundland government here but it, it's all secret no no information available and they said oh let, let them handle it all this no we, we don't we won't get involved and that's not good enough the, the government, I know there's an interim premier now, but even so... There's no such thing as the interim premier. He's the premier. He's the premier. He says, he says he's only interim. Anyway, but then far, I, we don't have any uh, constitution that allows for that tag. He's the premier. He's the premier he's until the he's premier not the premier anymore. He's responsible. Absolutely, he's responsible. Uh, the things that you're concerned with, and many of us are, whether or not it's uh, a matter of bungling or a, a inappropriate time frame for maintenance or upkeep or whatever the case may be, Will we, in your opinion, uh, arrive at some sort of definitive conclusion based on the PUB review and be able to hold people accountable? Whether they say the PUB says this is a uh, maintenance schedule that's scheduled inappropriately or people withdrew applications which led to the demise of the system, blah, blah, blah. Do you think we'll ever get to a point where we will be able to look at the people that you and many others place faith in, the PUB, to give us the answers we are asking the questions of? I don't think we will. What are you? Well, I, unfortunately, I have to agree with you because now, the, the, the PUB is a, a good thing to have around to control things. Nothing wrong with the PUB. What? No. Nothing wrong with it, but I don't think we're going to get any of these questions answered. Uh, no, yeah, I know what you're saying, but they've made suggestions. For example, on this maximum 1575 megawatts, that's the maximum they can put out. That's what Nalcor is saying. Currently, yeah. Yeah, you know, currently. And they're well up around over 1400 or something now with the weather conditions. But they told, and I repeat, I haven't got, not, I haven't got it in writing here, but I know what my source is, is reliable. The, 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 uh, the board told the company... These are the situation. Now, look look out, we're going to have cold winters, so can you get your problems straightened up? About three weeks ago, they told them that. This is problems with the three ones I mentioned. These three, they haven't done that. They don't listen to the pub. And the pub, apparently, and, and Alcor don't see eye to eye on very many things. That's unfortunate as well. But, but the pub is going to do a good job. I was down recently to a meeting when, when they came forward with their plans to do a major investigation into the outages last fall. Or in, in, in January. But they may do a fine job and they may do an exhaustive review. But I don't think we have the wherewithal to get in the hearts and minds of what motivated the applications or withdrawal of applications in front of that regulatory board. I think we are going to have a very fundamental overview of the system. Whether or not it was reliable, if it's determined that because of Unit 1 and some issue paid a spare and something at the hardwoods and something at wherever, Sunnyside, if that's the reasons they can point to in engineering terms, for why we suffered outages, that's the end of the story. We will not, we're not going to be calling witnesses under oath to give us hearts and minds uh, declarations about how applications were crafted and withdrawn, are we? I don't think we're going to get anywhere with any of that stuff. Well, the thing is, somebody got to be responsible from the very top, and I don't like to have Nalcor the responsible for it. It should mean control of all the supply of power. The government got to step in. Maybe it's through the uh, utilities board or not. I don't know, but somebody got to step in and say, you're not doing your job properly. The question is on my mind, is on everybody's mind. Why did you apply for hundreds of millions of dollars back in, the, in, in this past year to do work on our local supply on the island to improve it? And then when, when the, when the uh, Muskrat Falls was sanctioned, uh, what I'm saying is fa there are facts. A few days after, almost in a matter of hours, these applications to do this work on our local system on the island in particular was withdrawn. I mean, that's scandalous. Uh, so they emphasize all their money they had available, pumping into Muskrat Falls. I mean, you know what's happening in Muskrat Falls. Most yep. people do billions of dollars going in there. But that we don't know if that source is going to be reliable at all down to the end because of the cable links. But we will know based on what the PUB does inside the review because that's part of the consideration. It's not just what happened in January, what's going to happen in 2017 with the links from the Labrador, from Labrador to the island and the island to the mainland. So that's part of the review, which it should have been all the way along. And I guess we will 
will have our first basic understanding from a reviewer outside of NALCOR itself on that reliability. We had the MHI review, Navigant, and the otherwise. They pointed out some of the hurdles and obstacles and risks associated. Now we have what everyone's been asking for. If it's only reliability, not business case, not fiscal model, none of the plans of the URB, none of that stuff, but a reliability issue should be settled once and for all by the PUB review. And if it's not, and if people who are opposed to the project will not accept that, then I will be proven right on my assertion there is no settling this conversation. It will be a controversial, contentious issue until the end of time. Reliability is one well, thing. Yeah, Hearts and minds we can't settle or solve. Well, I mean, we the, the fact is that uh, the Nalcor and, and, and Hydro has confirmed that even after Muskrat Falls is on stream, it's still an unreliable source of energy for the province for three years after that. We're looking at down in, two, in, in 2000, 2021. Right, and then, of course, so the we've got to have something done locally, Patty. Yeah, we do, and that's why those thermal generation uh, opportunities will still be part of the equation. People don't know that. Mr. Doomer has brought up on the show the extra $1 billion plus dollars for the purchase and the installation and the upkeep and maintenance of these thermal generation units, which is a real conversation we should be having as well. Plus, right. Nalcor will tell you we won't be in this predicament when we're in part of the connected system. 500 megawatt cable, the Maritime Link also has ability to flow power one way and the other, so we won't be in that spot. So all those things, you know the answers. I'm just regurgitating things out here. I'm not oh, defending it or promoting it or answer, preaching it. I, I'm I just telling you. Find out, Patty. I don't know all the answers, but I dig in to find out for you. I didn't know until a few days ago that uh, Hydro paid $45,000 per hour yep. to the Deer Lake supply of power. It came out to $5.6 billion in the last problems we had a little while back. Now, uh, and now I don't know what the, why they can't pick up more power now from from Deer Lake. I don't know. Maybe there's a problem over there. I don't know. There could be. I'm going to see if I can find out because that is a contributor that could certainly help. Uh, well, everything could help because if we're within 50 megawatts of the conversation rolling blackouts, everything helps. That's Jim, right. i got to go to the right break. On. Yeah, thanks, Patty, for the time. Appreciate the call. Take care. All the best. Bye-bye.